and hello everyone welcome back to a new video so the other day someone left a comment saying hey how do you do math in brainfuck and that's a valid question one of the things i always wanted to do but never really knew how to because i never really decided to do that to like dive into it is math so i'm going to show you the basics of doing some mathematical things in brainfuck this means add subtract divide modulo and times they're actually a lot simpler than we actually thought now if you don't really have brainfuck installed i do recommend you get it there's a lot of places you don't even need to install brainfuck you can just use it online i am going to use system f which is a linux brainfuck interpreter and yeah i'm also going to be using this website this will allow us to visualize what's actually happening because a lot of times it can be a little bit confusing seeing what's actually happening so having a website like this to debug your code it's just, it helps a lot let's just say that so let's get started so how do we add in brainfuck let's say we have three so what we can do is we can move one to one front and then how much we want to add so let's say we want to add five then we can start a loop and instead of this, we can say minus back plus front. And then once we get here, we can do that. This is how we add. So what's actually happening here? So we're setting the first one as free. The first cell is free. So if we were to go here, I'm going to, I'm going to do this. So this is cell one that is currently free. And then we have cell two, which is currently five, right? Now what we are doing is if we actually do this, like I like to split it up like this. So what we're doing is we're, once we start this loop, we're going here and we minus from here. So we make that four. Then we go back here to three and we add one to it. We add one to that. Whoops. And that will be four as well. And then we go back to this one. So now our cursor is here again. Then we start loop again. We minus that to three. We go here and make that five. We go back here and we make that two. We make that six, we make that one, we make that seven, we make that zero, we make that eight, and then once it gets back here, it's going to be like, okay, let's start over, and now it's going to be minus, but you can't minus a zero in a loop. So what it's going to do, it's going to skip all of this, and it's going to go here, and then it's going to go back to this original one right here, I mean right here, this first one right here, and it's going to print it out. Now, you, you might not be able to see this, so what I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to copy this, and then I'm also going to show you an actual example of it, but let's just show you this to show you kind of how it works. So this debugger, we're going to step through all of these. So you can just look, there's the code, and here are the cells. So I'm going to step, so see? First one, it turns to free, so as you can see there, it becomes free. Then it goes to the next cell, and it makes that five. Then it starts the loop, so it minus is one, it goes back to three, it adds one, it goes back to one, or it goes back to cell one, and it starts over. It minus from cell one, it goes back to cell zero, adds to cell zero, and it just does that the entire time until we have what we need. And there we go. Subtracting is basically the same thing, just the other way around. So let's go here and we add 10. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. We start here, we go to the next cell, we add 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, and then we go back and we minus 1. So this is going to give us 60 in that cell. Then we go to the next one and subtract 2. Now if we print out what we get, we get a uh, wrong one. Should add one more there. Then we get 9. Okay, so there we go. So we get 9 here. Now let's say we want to subtract from 9. So we're in the cell and the cell has 9. So we're, let's keep that in track. Or let's keep that in mind. Then we go to the next cell. So there's going to be a second cell, right? And at that cell, we're going to... Because we want to subtract 3. So we're going to add 3 to that cell. 1, 2, 3. And we're going to start a loop. Now this loop will basically just be minus. Go back. Minus. Go to front. So instead of having a plus sign there, so this instead of this being a plus, there's going to be a minus. So now it's basically going to, and then if we go here, we can just print it out as well. 
Now, if we were to run this, we get 6. This is getting an infinite loop, so if you want to negate that loop, we can just put a minus there, and that will allow us to do that. Anyways, so there is 6, because 9 minus 3, that's 6. So let's see what happens. I'm actually going to uh, copy this, and I'm going to go here into this code right here, paste it here, and as my initial value, just so we can keep it small, I'm going to go on 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, so that's going to be 9. Let's execute, and let's see, we step through it until we get 9, right? And then we go to the next one, we add 3 to it because we want to subtract 3. We start loop. We minus 1 from 3, we go back, we minus 1 from 9. We go back to that one, we start with minus 1, we go back, we minus 1, then minus 1, we go back, minus 1. And then, since it's already 0, we're going to break out of the loop, and we're going to go back to 6, and we're going to print it out. That's pretty awesome, right? So that's how you minus or subtract. Now, multiply, as I said before, is relatively simple. It's, let's say, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Now, to multiply 5, 5 times, we can just go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and subtract 1. And then, if we, uh, then that would print it, though. So, I'm actually just going to copy this and paste it in here, to be honest, because I think that would be easier to see or visualize. So, execute this. So, let's quickly step through it. So, we have 5 here. That's the initial value. We want to multiply by 5. We go to the next value, we add 5. We go back to that value, we minus 1. Then we go to the next value, we add another 5. We go back, minus 1. And we just keep doing that until the first value is 0. And by the time it reaches 0, we have multiplied it by the amount inside here. So, inside there. So, if we wanted to multiply this value here by 10, we can just add another one there. Then it's 10. If we want 10 times 10, then that would be 10 times 10. We want to make sure that's 10 times 10 and we actually get the 100. Let's paste it here. And I'll show you. If we press run, as you can see here, we get the 100. And that's 10 times 10 because this is 10 x's. And this is 10 x's and they get times with each other. Let's, let's start with very small values. So let's start with 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And that is not 5. That's 6. Let's delete that on there. So now we have 10. We're going to go to the front with two cells. So we're going to go to the next two cells. So we have cells like this. So we have 10 in this cell. This is going to tell us go to this cell, go to this cell, right? So we're in this cell. And we're going to add 4 to this cell because we want 10 divided by 4. And then we can just say 1, 2, 3, 4. So this will add 4 to that cell. And we want to go back to its original cell. So this first cell right here. So our cursor is right there. And then we can start the loop. Now it's going to look very complicated, but believe me, it's not as complicated as it looks. So we're going to subtract. Go to the next cell. Oops, I want to do that one line. Go to the next cell, add. Go to the next cell, subtract. And then there's going to be a loop. What are we doing here? Basically, we're subtracting one here. So that becomes nine. We go to the next cell, we add 1, because currently it was 0. We go to the next cell, we minus 1. So this would be 3. Right? Then we start a loop. We go to the next cell, we add, and we go two more cells to find. So currently we're standing here. This is where we are. I'm going to go here, and I'm just going to put a 0 to where we are. We are here. So that zero represents us. We are there. Now we're going to go to the next one and we're going to add one to it. So we are currently here. And then we're going to go two more. So this is zero and this is zero because one thingy and then there's another thingy. And we are currently there. Because it is zero, this, this right there, there, that values is zero. It's going to skip this. So it's going to skip the next iteration of the loop, and we can go to the next part. Now, that cell is also going to be 0 when it starts out, right? So there, that's, that, it's here right now, that. Now, we're going to create another loop. I know there's a lot of loops here, but believe me, it's worth it at the end. We're going to add 1, but because it's at 0, you can't start a loop if the value is currently 0. So, it's not even going to do this loop, so we can actually not do this loop right now. 
because that loop doesn't need to be there. And since that is how that's where it was, at the end of this that entire loop, we want to go back one two one two one two. So let's see. One two. One two, one two. So we're at the beginning, right? That's where we are. Once we we want to get here. So that's going to go back to the beginning because this is not zero yet. Okay, let's do it again. So it's going to become zero. I mean, that's going to become eight. It's going to go to the next one. And that is going to become two because it's going to add. Go to the next one. That is going to become two because it was three. And it's going to start a loop. And it's going to be like, okay, add one here. So this is going to become two. And then it's going to go front two spaces, going to go to next space, and it's going to say, okay, that's still zero. And it's going to do that for quite a while. Let's actually use a stepping mechanism for this. Let's actually go here and we paste it, because I'm not going to draw that or going to do that all the time. So look how it steps. Watch how it steps. So first we're going to add that 10. Okay, now here we want to do 10 divided by 4. And we're going to just going to step through the entire time, as you can see. Step through it the entire time. We finally got to a point where this right here, that loop, is going to become an infinite loop. So let's actually fill in that loop before we continue. So what we can do is we can just say plus. And I'm going to show you what it all means in a second. We're going to go minus. And yeah, let's just go here. There plus there. And then outside of that loop, we want to go like that and like that. Okay, I'm going to show you in a second how this loop. Let's just quickly rerun this code so you can see where that happens. So let's copy these values. So this would be a seven right now. Then it's three, one, three. So seven, three, one, three. And now it's here to start again. Now we're going to subtract this. So this is going to become, instead of seven, it's going to become six. It's going to go to the next one, as you can see right there. And it's going to add one. So that's going to go and become four. It's going to subtract one. And it's going to become zero. Then it's going to start that loop. And it's going to become four. Because as you can see there, it becomes four. It's going to move up one, two. And it's going to go to the next one. But this is still zero. So let's quickly see what happens if we were to just paste this in here, right? But as you can see, even with this piece of code, once it gets to that loop, it knows it should skip. So once it gets to this part right here, it knows it should skip because it that it can't loop on a zero. I'm going to skip this one one more time. And let's see what happens. What happens? It's going to become six, four, zero. And now it's going to skip this loop right here because it cannot loop at zero. So this loop right here, it cannot run because this one right here, that is zero. So this four shouldn't even be four, this should be three because it couldn't run this loop because this, it, it, it can because this is zero. Once this has a zero as its cell value, it's just going to skip it. That's what's been happening here this entire time. Anyways, now that it is there, look what happens. So we're at that part right there. Step, it goes to the next cell. Because the cell is not zero, it can actually start the loop. It's going to add one. It's going to subtract one. Go back to the previous one. Add one. Go back to the front one. And it's going to do that until that cell three is equal to zero. Add one, and then here it goes again. And it goes forward two times and it goes back all the way. And let's see what happens. As you can see, it is going to do this a couple of times. But once we get to the end, as you can see, we get these two, look, three and four. These are the ones you should look at. You don't have to care about cells zero to two. You care about cells three and four. Basically what happens is when you get four, I mean 10 divided by four, that's two. But 10 modulo 4, 
that is also 2. To make it a bit easier to understand, let's make instead of 10, let's make it 25. Okay, so here we have 25. 25 divided by 4. Let's see what happens. Here we go. So 25, so 4 times 6, let, let's see, see what that is. So I'm going to go here, I'm going to say 4 times 6. Oops, my bad. 4 times 6. We get 24. Right? So that's 24. But the value you want is 25. So we get 1. Now, you know, you don't have to care about the top part here. It really doesn't matter. But basically what happens is we get modulo, which is free. And if you don't know what modulo is, it's basically, basically like the remainder. Since since we 4 times 6, that's 24. But since we have 25, and remember, with brain fog, we can't go like 5 or 4 dot 5. We can go 4.5. That doesn't work. Like, it doesn't work like that. So what we do is we say instead of 4.5 or 6.5 or 6.1 or whatnot, I don't know what dot is, but instead of doing that, we just get a value that's left over, that one value, and that's the modulo. So the same here, if I were to go 25 modulo 4, that would give us 1. 25 divided by 4, that would give us 6.25. But we can't get 25 in brain fog, that we can't get this dot. So what we do is we just get that number and we get that number. So then we know 1 was left over, 1 was incomplete. So yeah, it's a very, very long and complicated process, but if you go through it really slowly, you can start understanding it. But yeah, this is how you do some basic mathematical operations. There are more, but I feel like they will just become more and more complicated as you get, as we go on. And this video is really pretty long. So yeah, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed and at least understood what I talked about most of the time. And I'll see you all again in the next video.